Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Today we are going to do something pretty cool, in my opinion. We have a 71 Monte Carlo here. This is one of those El Cheapo Jetta toy models. Very cool for customizing. They have removable grills, headlights, bumpers, sometimes tail lights. Really cool castings for customizing. When I was picking this up at the old Walmart the other day, the only car that came to mind for this was the 71 Monte Carlo from Fast and the Furious, if you know the one I'm talking about. So this casting is exactly what we need. The only thing we won't be needing is this little teeny notch that's cut out. So I think what we might be doing here is I'm going to remove this little side exit. We'll fill that little hole and then we'll do new side exits on both sides instead of whatever this is. I don't know why there'd only be single exhaust on this thing anyways. That's madness. Just look at it. It should have quad exhaust. So anyways, that's the plan today. So let's take this bad boy apart. So we're going to need black wheels on here. But the same style. We'll figure that out later. I might have some options for wheels. The most basic, basic interior imaginable. These 132 scales are probably my all-time favorite for customizing. Just because you got a little bit more wiggle room for for details and such. There's some upcoming changes happening on YouTube in the new year that... I think a lot of us customizers, Hot Wheels people in general, are a little bit concerned about. And it all has to do with YouTube getting in trouble for collecting data of kids that are below the age of 13. YouTube in the past has got away without worrying about such things because kids under the age of 13 were not allowed to be on the site. But recently the FTC has figured out that YouTube has been collecting data of these children below the ages of 13 and have fined YouTube $170 million in, in part of a settlement where they also agreed to implement changes to avoid the collection of data of kids below the age of 13. So one of the changes that YouTube has implemented is they want all creators to label if their videos or channels are intended for kids below the age of 13 to watch. As you guys know, my channel is not intended for, for kids. The average age of my audience is probably 30. So if I label all my videos as not for kids, and the FTC comes along and finds my channel and says, oh no, he's working on Hot Wheels. This is clearly intended for kids. I could get a hefty fine of over $42,000 maximum for each one of my videos. So that leaves me with a couple options here. I could label my channel as not for kids and take my chances and see what happens. And one day I could be fined with like a gross amount of money. Or I can mark my channel as made for kids. But then what that does is it removes my channel's ability to have comments, to have bell notifications, to have... I would imagine live streaming would be cancelled. Anything like that. So it basically cripple my channel and on top of that, the ads would then be generalized on my channel instead of personalized. Not that that matters to most of you people. So it's pretty scary. Um, for me doing this full time, you know, my, my general livelihood is at stake here with, with the upcoming months and what decisions the FTC is going to make. And it's pretty scary. So... I don't plan on uh, stopping making videos, obviously, but because I am doing this full time, I, I might have to go to work because no matter what happens, there's more than likely going to be a loss of revenue and I just won't be able to do this full time anymore. So I'll keep you guys informed, but right now I'm not sure what is, what is going to happen. More or less, YouTube kind of just waved themselves of all responsibility for who's watching what 
and put that all onto the creators. So it was pretty sad that that happened. Well, this looks like it's beat up pretty good. So I'm going to give this a couple more minutes and I'm going to go give it a good old scrub in the old sinker and uh, we'll be back here with a nice clean car. Okay. Okay. So we got just a few minor mods we're going to have to do to this casting. For one, the movie car did not have door handles or locks because it was in the stages of getting various bodywork done. So I'm going to have to remove those. And we might drill a hole in the trunk lid here because that lock was missing as well. And for the most part, the paint job on this car was various shades of primer and it had kind of a, a matte yellow finish for the most part. But there was little areas that had primer. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark where these locks were. So I'm going to make a line that I can reference later after I file these off. Rather than filing these off, I'm just going to buzz them off with my wheel. It's going to be a little bit cleaner than trying to use a file. Our door handle's gone, so I can go ahead and just connect our dots here. And we'll use our center punch. And then we can drill. So now I'm going to just do the same on the other side. But the other thing we have to do is delete this little opening for the side exit. So we're going to take care of that with a little bit of putty. You could really fill it with anything. You could fill it with super glue if you wanted. So I'm going to carve that up, make sure my putty is going to stick. It's going to mix up a little teeny batch and we'll get that filled. A little dab of do. Just going to get a little chunk in here. We're going to let this harden up. And we'll come back and do some finishing putty. I'm going to give that about 10 minutes to harden up and we'll come back and start getting that into shape and smoothing everything out. While that's drying, uh, we'll, we'll address these wheels. Rather than painting these nice chrome ones black, we're going to do a wheel swap on a Grand National. I didn't know that uh, gray Grand Nationals were a thing. I assumed this was a Buick T-Type when I purchased it. I didn't actually read the box. I just saw that the old Walmart replenished all the cars and just started grabbing frantically. These are the wheels we need. We'll put the chrome ones on the old Grand National. That's going to be sweet. This little putty section is hardened a little bit anyways. I just trimmed the big chunk off the top there and I guess we could just file off the bottom. And it'll be like it never happened. I think we can go ahead and hit this with a little bit of uh, Tamiya white putty and we'll get that trued up. And then we'll be looking to go for some paint in here soon. We'll just make sure there's enough on there that we can blend everything together nicely. This Tamiya putty really clogs up sandpaper quicker than anything. Beautiful. Mm. Beauty about this car is it's kind of beat up to begin with, so we don't have to worry about it being absolutely perfect. So on the movie car, this lower section of this rocker panel, it was bare steel. Almost like there was a tape line there and someone was about to do bodywork. So I'm not going to scotch bright this area. I want to have this kind of raw look. But everything else, we're going to scotch bright. Just to make sure everything's nice and smooth and it's going to accept our paint really well. 
Cool, that's all we need. So I think we are about ready to go into the paint booth. We're gonna get creative, We're doing some taping here. We've got all kinds of little panels. We're gonna have to tape off to simulate some repairs. On the movie car, right here, the hood was a little bit tweaked, but the grill didn't look damaged. So I'm not gonna be able to tweak this hood. But what I am gonna do to simulate the tweak is I'm gonna take a file and I'm gonna remove a little bit of material right here just to create a gap between the grill and the hood just on one side. Might have to put a little bit of a wash in there or something just so there's a shadow when everything is said and done. But there is a gap there on one side. That's all we needed. Okay, I'm gonna go give this a rinse, a little degrease, and we'll come back and we'll start doing some creative taping. So the original car had a vinyl top on it which was removed long before the movie even came out. There's actual pictures of this Monte Carlo sitting in a field and the roof was 100% rusted. So if you've ever removed a vinyl top before what you end up with is a big mess of glue and just raw body. So I'm just going to mask off our bare metal here. We'll paint the rest of the car and then we're going to come back and we're going to darken up this roof. So it's a bare metal roof that's kind of toned, kind of ugly, kind of rained on. So we're going to have to simulate that after we get uh, the rest of the body painted and primed. The only gray primer was on the hood. So what I'm going to do is very lightly prime the whole car, but I'm going to go thicker on the hood because we're going to be leaving this a nice solid gray primer and then we'll come in and we'll do our yellow and then we'll come in with that other kind of pinkish bondo primer color on the certain sections of the car that we need to do so this is ready to go and get primed at this point and then we'll move on to the next step so we are off to the spray booth right now Okay, I got the cow masked off, so we're gonna do the rest of the body in our yellow. We just mixed up, peel all this off, and we'll see where we're sitting at this point. It's looking pretty decent. Now I'd like to uh, blow a little bit of carbon up the side of the body here. Movie car's got a side exit exhaust happening around the back of this door. And it's got carbon kind of sprayed up on both sides. I like it. 
might be a little bit too much. I could thin that out with some sandpaper after, but got that dirty look. So I'm okay with that for now. So far, I'm pretty happy with uh, where this is going, but I do want to get rid of some of this shine on this raw body and just kind of darken it up just a little bit. Okay, Vern. All right, this thing's starting to look pretty legit. I'm going to use a Gundam marker as a wash to darken up this roof, and we're going to be applying it with a brush. So I got a little bit here on the top of one of my cups. This stuff seems to go on really thin, really nice. I'm just going to darken this up a little bit. exactly what I wanted just this kind of ugly looking bare metal look The last thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to put some red on these taillights. And then I think we can go ahead and clear coat. Any areas like the hood where we want it to be not quite glossy or even the roof, I'm going to wet sand the clear coat just to take the gloss off it. And then we'll get back to a little bit closer to a flat color. The car in the movie had a hood that looked a little bit more like this. You know, it's got just a little bit of shine to it. It wasn't dead flat like that. So a little bit of wet sanding, just enough to take the uh, the shine off it with some 2000 grit or something. We should get to where we're looking for. And then we can put on our hood pins. And I think this one even had hood pins on the trunk. So we're going to have to make those after. Camp. I like it. That's going to look fabulous. So we're going to let that dry completely. I'm going to give it a clear coat just to protect it. Createx paints are not very durable without any kind of coating. So I'm going to have to. Even though it's looking good as is, I'm going to have to. I'm sorry. So I'm going to let this fully cure. And then I think we're going to start building a roll cage and start working on the interior. So let's do that. I was trying to get everything as close to the roof as I possibly can so I don't have any issues with my assembly. I think the body is looking great and just the little subtle details of that roll cage is going to add a lot to it. So I'm feeling that it's looking pimp. It's looking pimp so far. I'm going to be painting it black obviously. Okay, roll cage is pretty well done. I'm going to paint everything black once this is fully cured. Now I've moved on to making a couple exhaust tips. I'm using some copper axle tubing, which I cut off at an angle. And I'm coming in with my Dremel with this little tapered tip and just cleaning out the inside of here and trying to thin out the wall of this tubing a little bit to make it a little bit more like exhaust tubing. This car had very modest exhaust. It might just be two inch exhaust and it's kind of angled up to line up with these little dirty marks. And then of course, before final assembly, we'll just paint these kind of an aluminum color and we'll be good to go. For these hood pins, I needed to come up with an idea where I could hold on to the hood pin, paint it, glue it all at the same time. So I left these little stems on the back and I can just add a little teeny dab of glue and squish them in place. And then once they're dry, I can just snip off the little stem 
and put a little dab of silver where the, the white styron would be showing and we have a finished hood pin. Very cool. Certain parts of the body here I uh, sanded just to take some of the shine off. I did the hood. I did the roof. I did these areas on the sides where there's bare metal and where there's these kind of pinkish color primered repair areas. I took the shine off of all of those so it looks like it was an afterthought. You know, somebody doing a rust repair isn't going to have gloss on the side of their body panel. So I think that all looks really good. And we're just going to do a final assembly here. Just trying to get this thing back together before we do the final reveal. One thing I'll mention, I didn't really do anything with the interior. This interior on this car is so very basic that it's... I pretty well just left it alone except for adding the roll bar. There's hardly any details to, to paint even if I wanted to. And in the movie, the only part of the interior you see is them banging through the gears 300 times throughout one drag race. So you guys know what I'm talking about. So I left it alone pretty much. Hell yeah, that thing's pimp. Look at it. Look at it in all its glory. I love the way it turned out. There's our exhaust pipes. As you can see. Really cool. Tail lights look great. No exhaust pipe on that side. I think it turned out really sweet. We'll get on a rotisserie, a little bit more light. So there's our Monty. Looking sharp. I had a really good time building this one. I really enjoy doing these movie movie car type things. I think it did a pretty good job of capturing the essence of this Monte Carlo. I really like it. And I'd much rather own this car than owning the original Jada Toys red one. So I'm not sure what's coming up next. But I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Oh, no.